wax melting boutique pen. And I wanted to show you how we use it. And I'll tell you a little bit about the tool. It is a tool that melts all kinds of wax. It melts crayons. It melts beeswax. It melts candle wax. Whatever wax you can put through, you can use. Can I hold it sideways to look at it? Here it is. It has a valve that keeps the, the wax from dro dropping out. As you can see, it's dropping out when I pick it up. Okay. And uh, the reason why we want to remove it is because sometimes you want to have a, a wide, drippy line, and sometimes you want a more controlled line. So I'm going to show you how I use it. Okay. Right up here, this is stretched What's sheeting. It? This is a sheet that I'm drawing on. I didn't actually see you put the wax in the pen. Okay. I'll show you how to put the wax in the pen. I take a small chip, no larger than that, because more than that will actually cool the pen down. So you only want a chip or two of this, and that's the maximum amount you put in the, the melter at the same time. And I just put in the valve first, and then I drop in the wax. So right now I'm working with a combination of white and orange waxes. And I'm going to draw a tree because that's what I feel like doing. Okay. So you put in a little piece of crayon. I very, th these small amount chunks of wax go a very long way to this tool. The line can be cha the line quality can be changed by tilting your wax melter, the wax batik pen, because it becomes wider when you slow down the line and tilt it, and it allows more wax to come through. Another thing about controlling line is the type of wax that you put in it. Because certain waxes have more pigment in them, certain waxes that are very high quality color waxes will give you a thinner line because it comes out of the hole at the end of the tool slower with more pigment. Where uh, something that is a pure paraffin will give you a much wider line because it melts at a lower temperature and comes out a lot faster. I have a question. I, what about changing colors? I'm about to change colors right now because I just ran out of the or, tiny little orange chip that I'm using, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to take another color. I'm going to take a reddish brown. Okay. That's it, the size that I need. No more than that. If I want to dump out the color that I'm using because I want to change, I just simply dump it out or run it out, mm -hmm. and then add the next color. Yeah. And in a very short few moments, we'll have the color coming through. There we go. That fast. Here I am doing my upside down tree again. You get it drawing upside down. I know, I think I'm going to draw upside down for the rest of this convention. It really works for me. <laughs> Seems like the uh, linear, it's a very linear quality using the Yeah, it's a beautiful pen. linear quality. Of course, you can fill with areas with a wax melter, too. If you wanted to do a traditional batik where you use a um, beeswax or a batik wax and you use it as clear, you can do that, too, and then keep on dyeing the fabric, drying it, and re using the wax on it. It's perfectly fine to do. It's a wonderful tool for traditional batik as well as this non-traditional way, which is using color crayons to give you the color for an immediate... Um, I'm curious how it's going to look when you add um, a watercolor okay. or a fabric that. color wash I'm or dye. I'm going to do that right now, so you will enjoy seeing that. I'm going to put a little bit of white in here. And this will lighten the color in a few moments. I'm going to take a little pan of the background. Behind you is a beautiful, large piece of work that was done on a used sheet, I believe. That That's right. It's a wedding hoopa. It's gorgeous. All done with this. Uh, All done with this tool and paraffin and crayon. Okay, now I'm going to do the wax resist technique, where you use a water-based paint on top of the wax, which will resist. But I'm going to paint down. Okay, I'm just using simple watercolors here, but if you wanted to have a permanent fabric that you could wear and use later, 
you would use permanent inks, permanent dressed. fabric dyes. you painting in the lines? Well, you don't have to paint in the lines. Sometimes I, if I want to do a large area and I want the uh, color to flow over it, I will wet a whole area of my batik. And then I'll take a dab of a nice bright color and just let it flow over. Yeah, but there's a lot. So, take off the And then I can dab in other colors or more intense colors and they bleed very nicely together. Mm, nice how it goes right up to the line but doesn't go behind it. That's right. So the wax line will start will stop your color. See the more amazing is that you're doing your tree and image upside down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank well, you. you know, perhaps there is no upside down when you're working on a circle as I am. It just goes round and round. <laughs> see if you get it from. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. I'm going to come back later and take a picture of it when it's done. Sure, you're welcome to. Thank you, Abby.